When Dave asked me to preach a few months ago, I thought I would be bringing a word of encouragement. In fact, I really fancy speaking on uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Since you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, you know, let's run with perseverance. It goes on to talk about fix our eyes on Jesus. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And I thought that would be great, a real word of encouragement and everything else. However, as um, world events have developed, uh, particularly in Israel and Gaza over the past weeks, I believe God uh, wants me to bring a more challenging word to you today. Um, I'm currently in my own church working through a series in the Gospel of Luke, uh, which is entitled, Jesus is for everyone. And Jesus really is for everyone, isn't he? Doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter the colour of our skin, it doesn't matter our uh, social status, our financial status. Jesus is for everyone. And the night before Hamas unexpectedly, totally unexpectedly invaded Israel, I finished uh, preparing a sermon on the verses that were read to us, Luke 12, 35 to 59. And the title of it is, Are You Ready? And the timing of this message was very significant for us as a church. And so I bring that same challenge to us here today. In these verses, Jesus warns that there is a crisis coming. You know, as soon as Jesus talks about being ready and watchful, we immediately think, don't we, of the return of Jesus Christ. We think of the second coming, we think of the end of the world, we think of the final judgment, and that is right. But when Jesus spoke these words, the crowds weren't thinking of, that Jesus was speaking about the second coming. Because Jesus was there right in front of them. He was speaking these words to them in person. They had no idea that Jesus was even going to leave them. They had no idea about the cross and the, the resurrection and the ascension. They had no concept that Jesus would return after death. And so Jesus in these verses actually to the crowd he's speaking to was warning about the crisis of his impending death on the cross. The great battle that was going to take place between the kingdom of evil and the kingdom of God. The rejection of the Messiah and the impending destruction of the temple and Jerusalem. And they need to decide whose side they are on. They need to be ready. And that's the message of Jesus to the people. But those same words apply to us in 2023. Isn't it wonderful how God takes the <coughs> words of Jesus, the, word of, the words of the Bible, and he applies them not only to the people that they were spoken to, but he applies them by his spirit right to us today, now here at Emmanuel Church in November 2023. You see, we're not facing the crisis of Jesus' impending death, but we are facing crises of our own generation, aren't we? We are facing the crises of this earth fading and failing. We're facing the crises of global warming and fire and floods and disasters and earthquakes and famines the crisis of wars and rumours of wars, the crisis of the impending return of Jesus, the crisis of the final judgment and the destruction of the world and everything in it as is taught in scripture, as taught in the Bible. And so Jesus' words in Luke 12 are vitally relevant to us in 2023. You know, many Christians believe that the return of Jesus and the final judgment is near. We do not know how much longer we have, do we? But I can say with total certainty, it is nearer now than it ever has been before. <laughs> now, Jesus is not a prophet of doom. He's not a scaremonger, nor am I. But Jesus' message is clear, a crisis is coming. And Jesus' question is, are you ready? Are you ready for life to get tougher and harder? Are you ready to face death? Are you ready for Jesus' return? Are you ready for the final 
judgment. And that challenge is there, isn't it? So what did Jesus say we need to do to be ready? First of all, be watchful. So in verse 35, Jesus says, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect him. So Jesus says, be ready for action. Don't be lounging about in your PJs and slippers. <laughs> be dressed, ready for service. Have your running shoes on. Always be ready to serve your Lord and Master at a moment's notice. And the challenge is, is will you be among those who will be ready immediately, notice there, that emphasis on immediately, to open the door and welcome back Jesus when he returns and knocks on the door. Jesus says we must be ready because he will come at an hour when we do not expect him. He says keep your lamps burning and that reminds us of the parable of the ten bridesmaids and their oil lamps and the question to each one of us is are you keeping your lamp burning or have you gone to sleep are you sleepwalking towards eternity are you asking the holy spirit for more oil to keep burning bright for jesus and my prayer and i'm sure david and jews prayer for this church and the leaders of this church will pray that, that each person in this church is, is keeping full of the Holy Spirit, keeping burning bright for Jesus. We need, you know, Jesus needs Christians who are burning bright for him in this city. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He really does. So secondly, firstly, be watchful. Secondly, be faithful. Verse 42, Jesus says, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them food, their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat up the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and an hour he's not aware of. And he will cut him to pieces and assign him with a place with the unbelievers. You see, Jesus is saying it matters how we behave today. It matters how we behave today. Your behaviour, my behaviour today has eternal consequences. That's scary, isn't it? That is scary. You know, one of the problems of being a born-again Christian is we seem to get away with living simple lives, don't we? You know, when I first became a Christian, I got a radical conversion, and uh, I thought naively that, uh, you know, God had done such a powerful work in my life that I didn't think I'd keep on sinning. You know, I thought, God's forgiven all my sin. And you know, then obviously you go on in the Christian life and you, and you realise that you still are a sinner. And, and you, you know, and when I did sort of a really bad sin or thought something really bad or said something really bad or did something really bad, you know, I was extra careful crossing the road. <laughs> because, you know, I was expecting, we lived in London at that time, you know, that a bus would come along and just sort of wipe me out, you know, because I felt as though I was under God's judgment because I sinned. I've got the real sensitivity to personal sinfulness. And I was struggling with, I felt uh, condemned. And one of the problems is, isn't it, as a Christian, is you, you go on and you end up doing these sins and it doesn't seem to have any effect. You know, God doesn't send a sudden bolt of lightning and turn you into toast. You know, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? So we can get away, or we seem to get away, with doing and saying and thinking things that are simple, that are very uh, ungodly in, in lots of ways. And, you know, the problem is, is we can continue the pretense that we're a good Christian. You can even continue the pretense that you're a good pastor, or a good elder, or whatever it may happen to be, or a good worship leader. 
And uh, we can continue that uh, pretense in that sense situation, we can treat others badly, our attitudes and our actions can stink. We can be involved in all manner of other sins, and the great tragedy of the church today <coughs> is all the scandals and the fraud and the immorality and the sexual abuse and the bullying that has gone on. And so often it's been church leaders who have done that. And Jesus says in these verses, I might have delayed my return. I might not strike you down in judgment now, but judgment is coming, folks. Jesus will return. You and I will be judged. And if you have not been faithful, and if your attitudes and our actions are offensive to me, you will be condemned. And Jesus says some very harsh words. You will be assigned a place with unbelievers. Those are Jesus' words. So don't play around at being a Christian. It's all or nothing, folks. Don't play around at being a Christian. So Jesus says, be watchful, be faithful. Thirdly, reorder your priorities. Jesus says, do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family, divided against each other, three against two, and two against three. They'll be divided, father against son, or son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, against uh, uh, daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Doesn't it sound like your family? <laughs> now, one of my pre-Christian friends was called Mark Harris. And uh, we had some very wild times. I was a wild, rebellious teenager. You wouldn't believe it now, would you? But I was. And, um, and we had some wild times together when we were older teenagers. Mark was a born salesman. He was very successful. He very, was very, very quickly promoted. He married his stunning blonde girlfriend, much to my great disappointment. I had told Trish. <laughs> he got bigger and better company cars. He bought a really flash executive home. He had a little baby daughter. He had everything, and he was only 26. Incredibly successful. And his whole focus and conversation was success, money, cars, possessions, he wasn't interested in hearing about Jesus and my newfound faith and what God had done in my life. Uh, and for a couple of years, uh, Mark had had a strange lump on his shoulder, on his uh, left shoulder. And eventually, he got it checked out after a couple of years. And they discovered that it was a cancerous tumor. And the cancer had spread, that it was inoperable, and that he needed chemo. And I went to visit him after his chemo, and his priorities had completely and utterly changed. He wasn't interested anymore in success or money or homes or cars or possessions. He just wanted more time. He just wanted more time with his baby daughter. He just wanted more time with his wife. And he was interested in Jesus. He wanted to know what would happen to him when he dies. The news that he was terminally ill completely changed his priorities. Completely and utterly. And I hate to tell you this, but Jesus warns us that each one of us is terminally ill. We have a terminal illness called sin. You know, none of our bodies are going to live forever. Most of you are young, a lot younger than me, and so you don't very often think about this, but uh, uh, when you get as ancient as me, you begin to realise that uh, you're not going to live forever, and uh, bits start falling off you and uh, heading south and the rest of it. Um, but the reality is we're all dying. It's just that some of us will take longer dying than others, and uh, that's the reality. But none of us knows how young or old we may be when we die. And Jesus says we need to reorder our priorities in the light of eternity. In the light of his return. In the light of the fact we're not going to live forever. And there's even more reason to reorder our priorities. 
when we realize that Jesus is coming back, that he will return and that judgment day is coming. We do not know the day, we do not know the hour, we do not know the year. It could be before the end of the service. Depends how long I've gone. <laughs> um, it could be. It could be at any time. The question is, is are you ready? Are you watchful? Are you faithful? Are you reordering your priorities? Jesus says, if you're really going to be ready, if you're really going to be faithful, if you are really going to reorder your priorities, it may cause division in your family and among your friends. In many parts of the world, following and obeying Jesus brings division between family members and friends. If you're a Muslim or a member of another faith community, choosing to follow Jesus wholeheartedly, being ready for Jesus is likely to bring big divisions in your family. You may face persecution. You may face death. And being ready for Jesus' return means reordering our priorities, whatever the cost. We are immensely privileged in Rockbridge Centre to have a substantial number of people who have had to flee their home countries because of their faith in Jesus Christ. We have a large number of people who have come across on the boats that we hear so much about. We've had people who have had to flee uh, and not even be able to say goodbye to their family because someone has found out that they're a Christian. And you know, it's such an honour and to have a privilege in your church to have people who have made those sacrifices, who have gone through persecution. You know, that brings it home. Because you know, so often, those dear ones who have been through that really struggle with being a Christian in the West, with all the materialism and all the things that we have added onto our lives. It's so easy to be a Christian, isn't it? In our country, compared to so many other countries or situations in the world. And they sometimes really struggle to have that same commitment as they, hit, they go forward in their, in their lives. But, uh, you know, we need to reorder our priorities. And then finally, get right with God right now. Jesus says this you know, interesting bit of advice. But why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled on the way, or your adversary may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. I will suggest to you that Jesus there is not giving legal advice about making every effort to reconcile with your enemy before he takes you to court to face a human judge. Jesus is saying, judgment is coming, folks. We will all be facing God the judge. And what Jesus is saying is, make sure you're reconciled with God before the devil drags you in to face God the judge. Make sure you get right with God before you die. Make sure you get right with God before Jesus comes again. Make sure you get right with God before the final judgment day. Otherwise you will be condemned by the judge, you'll be thrown into the prison of hell, and you will never be able to repay the debt of your sin. Wasn't it wonderful earlier to celebrate what Jesus has done for us? The lamb, is it Kenny? We brought that to us. Now the lamb who died upon the cross for us, paid all the debts for our sin. Come to him and know his forgiveness, that your name may be written in that Lamb's book of life. You see, Jesus is not joking in these verses. Jesus is deadly serious. He doesn't want any of us to be lost and spend eternity in hell. Jesus calls us to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Do you realize that was the very first message that Jesus brought? In Matthew 4, verse 17, he started off his ministry and his, his message was repent for the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. 
So Jesus says to the people, and he says to us today, repent of your sin now. Don't delay because Jesus is coming back soon. Repent of your sin. Don't waste any more of your life because your death may be just around the corner. Believe in Jesus Christ now. Discover the wonderful truth that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price and the punishment for your sin and for my sin. Experience the forgiveness of your sins through Jesus' blood shed on the cross for the forgiveness or for the remission of sin. You know, there should be some smiles on our faces. You know, as we realize what Jesus has done for us, you know, each one of us is a sinner. And we are condemned, but the wonderful truth that Jesus has taken our place, he is the divine substitute. He has died in our place so that we can know forgiveness, but not just so that we can know forgiveness in this life, but so that we can inherit eternal life. Praise God. That we will not be condemned. Praise God. Enjoy the wonderful experience of the burden of sin and guilt in your life, being totally lifted by the forgiveness of Jesus. The experience that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I was going to say, I used to be a big sinner. So I'm a big sinner. I praise God for the forgiveness of Jesus, the cleansing power of the blood. Lord Jesus Christ. Be born again. Discover what it means for the old to be gone and the new to have come, to be a new creation in Christ. Instead of being an enemy of God, living in darkness, become a friend of God, a child of God, living in the marvelous light of God's glory. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous I praise God. Be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit who brings that love, that joy, that peace, that patience, that kindness, that goodness, that self-control into our lives. Be baptized in water. If you haven't been baptized in water, it's a sign of that you are born again by the Spirit of God. Surrender your whole life to Jesus to worship, serve, and honor him as the first priority in your life. So in summary, a crisis is coming. Jesus is coming soon. Judgment day is approaching. Will you be ready? Will you be watchful? Will you be faithful? Will you reorder your priorities? Will you get right with God right now?